Hey everybody, it's Party Lead, and today we're kicking the year off with a look at all the strategy games we have to look forward to in 2021. RTS, turn-based, 4X, and anything else that fits the bill, there are quite a few games that are set to release spread throughout the year. I'll be taking a look at sim, management, and city building games in a separate video releasing in the next couple of days just to keep things organized, so if you're interested in those, make sure you stay tuned for it. Now any games you hear about in this list are games that I intend to cover on the channel through previews, reviews, let's plays, overviews, and more, so if you'd like to stay up to date with them and you're not already a subscriber, make sure you subscribe. As always, if there are any games that you're interested in, either in this list or those that I've missed, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know what you're looking forward to, and I'm always happy to add more to my radar. Now, without further ado, let's take a look at my most anticipated strategy games releasing in 2021. Stronghold Warlords is set to release on the 26th of January after being delayed out of 2020, and it looks to bring back a series that has had a few issues in its latest releases, which is now hopefully a thing of the past. This latest foray takes us east, far east, to East Asia, bringing us Japan, China, Vietnam, and the Mongols as factions, at least at launch. Things are looking pretty promising for Stronghold Warlords as it looks to innovate and push the series further with some new mechanics and ideas, particularly in the form of the titular Warlords who can be used to assist you in military and economic matters with their special abilities and skills. The various maps in single and multiplayer will have these Warlord characters scattered about and you'll either need to subjugate them or otherwise befriend them to get the benefits that they can provide. Think of them as resource nodes. Some Warlords will allow you to gain access to raw materials, while others will allow you to bypass the unit recruitment resource requirements, and there's others out there as well. On which note, as can be expected, you'll be managing a supply chain as well as your military, and you'll be tasked with taking care of where they intertwine. Or alternatively, as I just mentioned, you can use Warlords and political points to circumvent these needs. There's some fun gameplay footage out there already, showcasing the process of building up one's stronghold, walls and all, as well as the process of sieging or defending the siege of one. I can imagine it being quite fun plotting out defenses, establishing barriers, placing gunpowder trails and explosives, and just otherwise experimenting with different layouts and tactics. Similarly, experimenting with how to deal with them should be quite fun as well. As long as the AI is up to the task on either end of the spectrum of defense and offense. From archers to fire arrow carts to oxen carrying fireworks exploding on impact to ninjas who can run up walls without the need for siege equipment, it's safe to say the developers are having fun with the concepts they're exploring in the setting. Hopefully we will too when the game releases later this month. It's been a while since we've had a good stronghold game, so here's hoping this is the one. Set to release on April 22nd after being delayed in 2020, Humankind is likely the game I'm most excited for out of 2021. Most easily described as a competitor to Civilization, though that does really belittle Humankind and does it a great disservice, this 4X historical title is being developed by Amplitude Studios, the same folks behind the Endless Legends and Endless Space games, and it takes a very unique approach to the traditional formula. In Humankind, rather than selecting a nation to play as from start to finish, you select from 10 cultures at each era in the game, developing a national identity of your own around said cultures and their unique units, buildings, and mechanics as you traverse through the time periods. As you go through the ages, you'll be making decisions beyond what technology to research or who to conquer next. You'll be developing your people's ideologies, their civics, and their faith as well, looking for different opportunities to score points and win the game through a great interpretation of how we look at history. Fame. The victor is determined by which people, at the end of the game, have accumulated the most amount of fame by accomplishing various deeds, some that are available to all, others that are only available to the first to accomplish them. Fame comes from building wonders, finding natural wonders, being the first to land on the moon, growing your nation's borders, population, scientific capabilities, etc, etc. A blend of things that naturally occur over the course of a game, alongside things that need to be actively pursued. Outside of establishing cities, picking cultures, and developing the various aspects of your people, you will also be dealing with your neighbors, who are all rushing to do the same. 
Sometimes you'll make friends, using trade and alliances to gain an advantage over others, and at other times you'll be warring for dominance. When fighting battles, you'll see another major difference from the Civilization games. The opposing army stacks within the region of the engagement will spread out over the terrain and they'll take advantage of high ground, river crossings, flanking, and unit special abilities all together, making war significantly more interesting. Not only in its execution and its tactical layer, but also in all of its surrounding elements. The game takes into consideration your people's willingness to go to war with another people depending on a variety of factors, including how similar or differently you've developed your faction. It's a way to reflect how people with similar ideologies or similar cultures are more likely to get along than people with opposing ideologies or vastly different cultures. It's a very nice approach to the entire concept and to the entire topic, and it really changes how war is approached in a genre that typically is often focused around just declaring war on everything and dominating. There's a lot to touch on when it comes to humankind because with their open dev approach to the game, I and many others have been able to play it through various scenarios in early access on the lead up to release. Through these scenarios, we've been able to experience the promise of the game and it's looking and playing very well so far. I am thoroughly excited here and if you want to see more about humankind, you can already see lots of coverage on the channel and you can expect much, much more in the coming months. The First Men is a real-time 4X strategy game with a very charming art style that was set to release when it's ready, but now says it'll be out Q2 2021 for early access. The game in single and multiplayer has you starting from the very first couple in your society, building a custom Adam and Eve out of a large variety of possible combinations, proceeding to build a full-fledged society out of their progeny, and then leading them through all the challenges of the harsh world hoping for survival, and perhaps world domination. As a character-driven game, there are countless traits and abilities that your citizens might develop, and as you build your empire and cities up, you'll be exploring the world around you, discovering and interacting with other races, and engaging in real-time, pause-reliant tactical battles when things go sideways. Positioning, coordinating attacks, and the use of abilities are all highlighted as key aspects of battle, and I'm curious to see how it all comes together. From settlement management to combat to building construction to workshop support and an in-game map editor, not only are there a lot of very interesting concepts and mechanics being discussed, there's also a lot of potential for mod support and the resulting longevity that that offers. I quite like the art style and I'm on board with the gameplay we've seen so far, so I'm very excited to see if the First Men manages to hit the right notes when it finally comes out this year. Star Dynasties, or Star Dynasties if you will, is set to release sometime in early 2021 after having a short demo late in 2020 and a beta testing session in December. I was actually able to check out the demo in 2020 and I am thoroughly excited for everything Star Dynasties has to offer. Set centuries after the destruction of Earth plunges humanity into a new dark age, Star Dynasties has you leading at the head of a political family in a rather feudal system, and it aims to have you manage relationships within your realm as much as without, which includes everything from personal relationships to political ones. There seems to be a great focus on characters, who they are, their titles, their claims, their personalities, and how these personalities either clash or synergize. And there also seems to be a great emphasis on the idea of emergent narratives in a sandbox world with all sorts of events and decisions to make out of said events. Dare I say that there are some serious Crusader Kings vibes going on here? Now if you follow this channel, you already know very well that I like Crusader Kings a lot. And I'm also a bit of a sci-fi nerd, so Star Dynasties definitely has my attention. During the demo, I was able to experience some of the family management and interpersonal relationship aspects as well. Arranging marriages, finding people's secrets, seeking out claims, arranging assassinations, etc, etc. I was also able to experiment with some warfare, although not as much as I would like to. It's fair to say the demo has my interest peaked, and it certainly has the right vibe. I'm in the developer's discord and I'm following their developer diaries, so you can expect much more coverage of Star Dynasties on the channel as it nears release as well as beyond. Science fiction Crusader Kings sign me right up. Carrier Command 2 was a surprise announcement from November of last year, set to release in spring of 2021. 
This sequel to the game from 1988 is a sci-fi real-time strategy game that puts you in command of a carrier capable of launching aircraft and amphibious units that you can also hop into and directly control against the AI as well as enemy human players, i.e. there is both a single and multiplayer component. As you battle to conquer an archipelago, you'll be scouting with your units, defending resources produced at the islands you've taken control of, and then finding synergies among your units to further your gains and conquer more and more until you dominate the entire archipelago. We haven't been told too much about the game just yet, apart from its focus on strategy, planning, and teamwork, though we have seen some gameplay footage. It looks like Micro Pros is looking to stick to a retro vibe with all of its UI, and we're certainly seeing a more stylized approach to things rather than gritty realism. I'll have my eyes on this one as it goes through development. It definitely has some interesting concepts from the visuals we've seen, and I'm curious to see how it all comes together. Set to release in June of 2021, Stellar Warfare is a real-time space RTS where you design your own ships, compose your fleets for tactical superiority, and face off against others to be the dominant space power, all while trying to maintain a healthy economy that sustains your war engine. The game's website takes a dig at overly ambitious games that never release, saying the focus is on a handful of high-quality base game features and visuals that can be built upon later. We very often see indie games bite off way more than they can chew, either executing poorly on promises or never seeing the light of day, so it's definitely a nice change of pace to see here. Resource collection, ship customization, base building, multiplayer, and homeworld-esque combat. That's the foundation, and that's a solid foundation if it's all done right. The press kit boasts millions of ship combinations using ship frames, weapons, and modules, many of which can be found floating through space, presumably as a result of a cataclysmic event. As you can imagine, some elements are more or less efficient under various circumstances, and a well-balanced fleet is a necessity for survival. The developer is inspired by Red Alert and Homeworld, and between that bit of information and what I've seen so far, I'm thoroughly excited to cover Stellar Warfare on this channel. I really hope they do a good job of implementing the economy and making it just that right level of complex that keeps things interesting on both fronts for a long time. But either way, I'm keeping my eyes on it, and I'm hoping that it's a stellar experience. Terra Invicta is set to release sometime in 2021 and is being developed by Pavonis Interactive, previously known as Long War Studios, the founders of which are the folks behind the Long War mods for the XCOM games. So even though Terra Invicta is the group's first standalone title, there's clearly a bit of a pedigree worth being excited for. Terra Invicta is a sci-fi grand strategy game in which you lead one of many factions of humans preparing against an alien threat. While you industrialize space, establishing space stations and asteroid mining colonies, you'll also need to try and unify the various human factions to stand together against this outside threat, building a fleet and defense network in preparation. Having gone well above and beyond its Kickstarter goal, we're going to see Terra Invicta launch with seven playable human factions, additional ship styles, a scenario where the invasion takes place during the Cold War, a scenario where humanity has already spread to Mars, the asteroid belt, and Jovian moons before the aliens arrive, among other extras. Each of the factions will have unique win conditions and leaders that must first convince world governments to align with them as they try to learn about the inbound threat before it strikes. This and more is done using your six counselors as they go about partaking in missions. The game intends to reflect real-world geopolitics and use that as a gameplay element. Different countries bring different resources to the table for the faction that they join, and when the aliens get involved, it all gets more complicated as some nations might align themselves with the alien invaders and act in accordance to their needs. This means that battling will take place on Earth itself using armies and air forces, in fighting that might weaken Earth's defenses against the final invading force. This idea of a fractured Earth goes beyond war. The tech tree is split into global advancements versus accomplishments that only serve your own purpose, and the initial forays into establishing habitation in space will be competitive between the various factions as well. Eventually, you'll be designing your own ships and fleets and sending them around the solar system, taking into account ship mass, propellant load, delta V, etc., etc., and when they engage in battles, 
you'll be taken to a different layer in which maneuvering and Newtonian physics play an integral role. The developers have said they don't simply want a superior economy to mean a superior army, and tactical movement and employment of weapons and strategies should level the playing field. There's a lot of very interesting promises being made for Terra Invicta, and that can often be a worrying sign. But between a history of quality results, angel investors, a publisher, and constant updates, I'm willing to get excited here. It doesn't help that I'm an absolute nerd for hard sci-fi, and between the simulation of everything from real-world geopolitics to the physics of space battles, Terra Invicta is high on this list. I hope we don't see a delay but an alpha sounds like it's right around the corner. Stay tuned for a lot of Terra Invicta coverage on this channel. While we're not sure when exactly Manor Lords will be releasing, with the Steam page stating it as TBA, there's reason to believe we'll at least be getting early access sometime in early 2021, particularly because the Manor Lords Discord has an FAQ that says as much. Manor Lords is looking to really shake things up as far as city building and real-time strategy is concerned, and I had a hard time picking where in these videos Manor Lords should live, because again, this one's all about strategy games, the one that's coming up is about city builders, but Manor Lords over time has really evolved from just being a city builder with RTS elements to more of a 4X kind of a thing. That's not how the developer is describing it, but it certainly gives off those vibes, and I'll get into that in a moment. The developer is extremely active on Twitter. They're constantly sharing development updates with footage, transparent gameplay examples, and a clearly open-minded approach to feedback. Recently, the developer has been focused on the real-time battle side of things, and we've seen very exciting mechanics including mixed equipment, squads with individual entities using individualized stats, non-clone armies, organized retreats, glorious charges, alternate ranged firing modes, and far more for what looks like a Total War-style type of real-time battle system where you command separate units ordering them into formations, taking advantage of terrain, a rock-paper-scissors system, etc, etc. Beyond these battles though, as I mentioned right at the start, the game is also a city builder. You'll have a plot of land in which you'll be able to develop your own medieval city using an organic system of placement, relying on resources available locally, as well as those that you can trade with merchants as they come by your lands. One can expect all the usual trappings, supply chain management, seasonal production and requirement shifts, the taking care of citizens' wants and needs, researching new technologies, and producing goods that you can either export for money or use for your own purposes. Now, as if that's not enough, the game also includes a fancy approach to diplomacy that is reliant on writing missives to other lords and ladies with whom you can either cooperate or, well, war. It sounds like, rather than being satisfied with a city builder slash RTS, as I was saying earlier, Manor Lords is slowly growing into a full-fledged, real-time 4X game where all the city building, diplomacy, and battling takes place on a single map, all running at the same time. Whatever it evolves to, one thing is clear. The developer is passionate and is clearly trying their best to produce something that will stand out from the crowd. In many ways, Manor Lords is looking to set the bar for future medieval strategy games made by indie and AAA developers alike. As the scope grows bigger and bigger, I've seen many people express concern about the game actually ever getting released. With that said, it's important to note that the game has been in development since 2017, it's looking fantastic, and the tremendous work rate more or less makes keeping up with Manor Lords a daily endeavor, one that I've been undertaking. This might be the dream game come true for many, and so this channel is definitely going to stay on top of Manor Lords through its development, early access, and post-launch as well. Darkest Dungeon 2 looks like it will be pursuing the same early access model as its predecessor, and it looks like we'll see that early access sometime in 2021, though it will be exclusive to the Epic Game Store. We don't know too much about the upcoming game just yet, despite being announced very early in 2019. We've heard and seen very little as far as updates from the developers are concerned, but it does look like the game will be building off the solid foundation that the first Darkest Dungeon built, though I am curious about the supposed shift to 3D. It'll retain the iconic art style that many games have started to replicate since the first game released, but I'm just curious about how that and 3D work together for a hopefully improved gameplay experience. For those unfamiliar with the first game, it's a brutally punishing roguelike turn-based RPG 
taking an extremely dark tone where you lead a revolving door group of mercenaries against all manner of horrors. There's a bit of team management, including that of their mental and physical health, alongside a touch of inventory management and a fair bit of synergy development in your team as you hope to survive each foray into dangerous scenarios. I look forward to Darkest Dungeon 2, and I'm curious to see just how the sequel will build upon its predecessor. King's Bounty 2 will be releasing sometime in 2021, bringing a non-linear, open-world, third-person RPG with turn-based tactical combat set in a fantasy world. The game aims to create an immersive experience where decisions have consequences, moral choices provide a few dilemmas along the way, and tactical battles take place on the same map as navigation, bringing down a hex-based grid on which line-of-sight, terrain, and surprise tactical events sound like they'll keep players on their toes. There will be over 50 different troop types, and each unit will be able to improve over time as they gain experience and new abilities. On which note, as an RPG, you can expect a focus on character development. You play as one of three heroes who is prophesized to bring about an end to the destructive force known as the Blight, and each of these characters has unique backstories and personalities. There is an interesting system in mind that looks to have your character grow along the four ideals rather than a binary good versus evil. The four ideals are strength, art, order, and anarchy. This growth will have an impact on how the player's character is perceived and treated by other characters throughout the world, and I hope to see it go a bit beyond the standard RPG tropes. I'm curious to see just how far King's Bounty 2 is able to push this blend between RPG and turn-based tactics. Are we looking at something along the lines of Battle Brothers? or something else entirely. Either way, I'm very curious to see what comes of King's Bounty 2. I feel like I've been looking forward to it for a handful of years now. Falling Frontier is set to release sometime in 2021, and in a list of my most anticipated games, it is one of my most most anticipated games. A sci-fi game that blends real-time strategy and 4X concepts, Falling Frontier has you take command of your faction, and from a starting station orbiting a planet or moon in the solar system depending on your lineage, you look to exploit the galaxy around you, establishing industries, arranging the transportation of resources, researching civilian, military, and industrial technology, and, presumably, asserting your dominance over others who would do the same. The Steam page is relatively barren, but don't let that deter you. There is a lot of footage to be found on the developer's YouTube channel, and it's all very high quality stuff, maintaining an excellent tone and a great sense of direction while properly showcasing game features as they come together. We've seen the Ship Builder in action, where you're able to modify the external hardpoints as well as the internal areas of your ship chassis to create purpose-built ships piloted by crew with various perks that can help or hinder depending on the ship's objectives at any given time. We've seen how recon stations work, trading distance for angle, and using active versus passive modes to balance information acquisition and stealth. We've seen docking and crew transfers, and we've seen impressive combat, stealth, and destruction in space. This hard sci-fi stuff gets me very excited as it hits notes that we don't often see, and the visual fidelity of everything from the UI to the 3D models themselves brings it all together fantastically alongside a stellar soundtrack. Seeing the game zoom in and out of impressive space battles while also managing the greater empire gives a great sense of scale that feels very strangely grounded in hard science, and the level of detail the game looks to be aiming for at both scales is just astounding. I'm very, very, very excited for this one, and you can definitely expect a lot more in-depth coverage of Falling Frontier on this channel. In fact, I'm sort of already working on a separate video dedicated entirely to Falling Frontier because it's really caught my eye and I'm thoroughly excited for it. I don't think I can express my excitement well enough in words. Looking forward to this one.
City of Gangsters, not to be mixed up with Omerta City of Gangsters, is set to release sometime in 2021, taking you to Prohibition-era America and putting you in charge of a new crime syndicate. You'll be building speakeasies and distilleries while managing production chains and distribution. And if this all sounds a little like a game from last year, then yes, there are some serious Empire of Sin vibes. To be fair, it's a popular historical setting with lots of interesting opportunities, and being a time period I quite like, I really hope City of Gangsters finds a way to stand out and make itself special. You'll be working in Chicago, Detroit, and Pittsburgh, and you'll be busy researching new technologies, building contact networks, setting up legitimate businesses to hide your illegitimate ones, and you'll be dealing with cops and competition alike. Each playthrough goes from 1920 to 1933, meaning there's a pretty tight timeline within which you need to take control of the cities before alcohol becomes legal. And the little gameplay we've seen shows a rather vibrant and colorful approach to an otherwise dark and seedy topic. There's a lot of talk about building relationships, managing deliveries, and dealing with families and their memories of your actions. It all sounds very interesting on paper, and I really want to see how it all comes together and just how deep the game goes into all of these little details and the minutia of managing a crime syndicate. I really can't wait to see it all in action. Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign was set to release sometime last year, but now we're hoping for a potential 2021 release. I'm really excited to dive into this series. Not having explored the first game previously, everything I've seen of the sequel so far shows me a potential competitor to the likes of Crusader Kings and the Total War series. And that alone is enough to get me excited because competition is much needed in that world. Set in the medieval era in Europe and the area surrounding the Mediterranean, Knights of Honor 2 is going to be played entirely in real time, having players lead and appoint a court and its members, while also building cities, assembling armies, and building diplomatic ties. The plan is to simplify complex concepts and focus more on fun over historicity. This is something that can either be very well done or a shot in the foot. I hope it doesn't simplify concepts too much, as I do like my strategy games to challenge me, and I do hope that the fun versus historical accuracy conversation isn't used as an excuse to just throw the very fascinating context of the game out the window. Now, to be fair, I've been following the developer blogs, and it does sound like they are keeping things a bit more complex and a bit more historically accurate than they initially implied, so that's a very promising sign. Through these same developer diaries, we've been able to see some very interesting insights into some very interesting mechanics. Diplomats that help organize war plans and whose death can bring an end to said war plans. The option to switch sides in the middle of a war. The need to gain the loyalty of recently conquered peoples. Beyond that, we've seen mention of trade, the maintenance of supply chains, the use of spy networks, the need for marriages, internal and external affairs, traditions in place of technologies, culture, rebellion, marshals whose skills and levels help you in battle and unit recruitment. There's, there's really a lot of really interesting concepts being explored in great depth, and as a fan of the era and the genre, I'm very excited to dive in and see if we have something on our hands that will shake things up in this area. Again, competition always benefits us as the players. I really hope this releases in 2021, as I've had my eyes on it for some time now, and you can rest assured I'll be covering it quite a bit more on the lead-up to release, and hopefully for a while after. Songs of Conquest, originally slated for late 2020, has now shifted to a 2021 launch and is looking absolutely amazing. The constant flow of updates across their social media channels and dev blogs has been a great way to inspire continued confidence in a project that I've been excited for since it was first announced in 2019. The developers draw comparisons to Heroes of Might and Magic and Total War, some great things to be inspired by, at least in my opinion, and we've seen quite a bit of the game in its very many parts. The art is starting to come together, and it's looking consistently gorgeous, just as it did with its first reveal. The UI, animations, VFX pieces are all looking great and coming together nicely. As far as gameplay is concerned, one can expect all the usual strategy gaming elements. Building kingdoms, raising armies, wielding magic. But we're also going to have RPG elements added in. Quest around for loot, fight monsters, optimize build orders and strategies to pick off the enemy teams. As far as combat is concerned, the armies that you raise are commanded directly by you in battle 
and you have to create synergies between the magic casters, known as wielders, and the troops that they bring to the field. This kind of synergy building leaves room for things to either be very exciting and interesting, allowing for good lateral problem solving, or it allows for some very stacked OP and min-max formulas. I really like the idea of building synergies, and I'm also a fan of asymmetrical balance in strategy games, which is certainly in the books here, because we've got these varied factions from frog people to the undead to the gallant knights to the technologically advanced merchant nations. Again, I'm curious to see if they'll be able to balance that fine line between interesting synergies and stacked OP options. This one is very easy to be excited about. The game promises local multiplayer at launch, as well as single player of course, a level editor open to everybody, and a great callback to what the devs are calling classic adventure strategy. I'm really eager to see it all come together, and I cannot wait to cover it on the channel. Starship Troopers Terran Command is set to release sometime in 2021, after initially being set for 2020, and it brings us a brand new Starship Troopers real-time strategy game set in the wonderful universe built by one of the grandfathers of science fiction, Robert A. Heinlein. As a big fan of the book and of the movie, yes, for two very different sets of reasons, I'm really hoping that Terran Command is able to create an entertaining strategy game in the universe. It's been a while since we've had one. Hearing about tons of replayability with a dynamically generated campaign is promising, and a storyline and missions that develop according to decisions and achievements made on the battlefield should make for an interesting experience every time. From the sounds of it, players can either follow the ruthless orders from Terran Command, or they can choose to carve their own path and ignore some of the more questionable orders coming down from up on high. Unit customization, upgradable leader characters, and a detailed tech tree will hopefully provide some additional variety in approaches, and the information we have so far about the game implies that mobile infantry relies on effective tactics to overcome the numerical superiority of the arachnid bugs on the other side of the battlefield. The use of terrain blended with line of sight and line of fire mechanics means high and low ground and choke points will all be important consideration, but it also means that the bugs might try and set up ambushes to catch you off guard and take advantage of their numbers and familiar terrain. It sounds like there are some really interesting ideas here, but I'm definitely very cautious about their execution. I'll be keeping an eye on this one, and I really hope it finally releases in 2021. I'm sure the developers are doing their part to make it happen. Fingers crossed. Age of Empires 4, ever elusive, hopefully to be released in 2021, was first announced in 2017. In November of 2019, we finally saw a touch of gameplay to confirm that yes, the game is still being developed, and yes, it's looking compelling. Relic Entertainment are the devs being given the monumental task of bringing this classic RTS series back to life with a proper sequel, not just a remaster or a second remaster of one of the three games. The devs promise to modernize the series, and while this is most certainly exciting for some, myself included, it's also a very daunting task, and I'm very sure it scares many. Will the developers fundamentally change what makes Age of Empires great to meet expectations of a wider audience, or will they manage to keep hardcore fans of past entries front and center without alienating others and missing out on a broader appeal? I imagine the developers are going to have a challenging time, and the continued popularity of older Age of Empires titles is not only a great indicator of interest, but it really does double as competition with itself. We're going to be seeing varied game modes, and we've been told that there are a host of civilizations in the game, with a key focus being on having each faction play distinctly, which should hopefully allow for a great bit of asymmetrical gameplay. All we've seen so far are the English and the Mongols confirmed at launch, and I hope to see a decent number more at launch, because I'm very afraid about some good old-fashioned DLC-locked faction packs. It's hard not to think back on Dawn of War 3, for example, a game that many people like to pretend doesn't exist. What little gameplay footage we've seen shows us a gorgeous game that is aiming for a vibrant, yet still grounded look. And I do, all my concerns aside, very much look forward to diving in as soon as I can. Age of Empires were some of the earliest games I played as a kid. There's a lot of nostalgia, and at the same time, there's an understanding for the need to evolve as, you know, gameplay systems evolve and change and grow. So, 
as a big fan, not just of the series, but of Relic in the past as well, I really hope to see them succeed here and give us a wonderful new Age of Empires title. Sons of Valhalla has its release date as to be announced, so perhaps expecting a 2021 release is a little much, but I definitely have my eyes on this side-scrolling base-building strategy game. Vikings never really fall out of fashion in gaming, so it's nice to see a fresh approach to the topic. You play Sven Forkbeard, the son of a Jarl, out to conquer England and save the love of your life. It looks as though you'll be personally hacking and slashing your way through England while recruiting an army, engaging in battles and sieges, and establishing outposts and villages of your own as you do so. Perhaps the least traditional strategy game on the list by definition, but I'm always excited to see what people do with a genre that's off the beaten path. The developer is very active on social media, particularly Twitter, and as a result of that, we've seen lots of interesting things with regards to how this genre blend is coming together. We've seen side-scrolling aspects like the hero character running around, shooting arrows and swinging swords. We've seen catapults firing flaming shots. We've seen soldiers following the hero character around and engaging the enemy. And we've seen mention of boss levels, which implies boss battles, I presume. We've also seen strategy and base building aspects like blacksmiths that upgrade armor and weapons, siege workshops that make siege weapons, boulder traps on walls for defenses, archery ranges, etc, etc. Between all that and what seems to be a story-driven approach, I'm really excited to see how Sons of Valhalla comes together. Like I said before, I like seeing people push the genre in different directions. This is very much off the beaten path, not a very common sight at all, so I am thoroughly excited to dive in as Sven Forkbeard and see where the adventures take us, hopefully sometime in 2021. There you have it folks, my most anticipated games of 2021, at least as far as strategy, tactics, and 4x games are concerned. You can expect to see coverage of these games and more like them on this channel as more information becomes available, so make sure you subscribe for previews, reviews, let's plays, and more. Now, do you have any particular games that you're looking forward to this year? Any from this list strike a chord, or any that you think I should add to my radar? As I said before, please let me know in the comments down below. It's always cool to know what folks are looking forward to, and it really helps me know what people might want to see on the channel. Now, like I said earlier, I'll be taking a look at upcoming simulation, management, and city building games in a separate video releasing in the next couple of days, so stay tuned for that as well. I hope you're having a wonderful start to the year, and it certainly looks like 2021 is going to have a lot to offer. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons who have been supporting this channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And a big old thanks to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.